Yesterday began the season of Lent, and it starts off with Ash Wednesday. And in that season, the season of Lent, it's a time that's it's, it's intended to be a 40-day journey to take us through this time of preparation for Holy Week and the events of the death and resurrection of Jesus. So in this 40-week or 40-day period during the season of Lent, a lot of folks um, try to focus their time on spiritual disciplines. Now, some people use this season of Lent to, um, to take things out of their life. For instance, you know, some people will say, you know, I won't eat chocolate during the season of Lent, or I'll stop drinking soft drinks uh, for the season of Lent, or maybe I'll, I'll not turn on television or something like that. Other folks decide what they're going to do for this period of time is they're going to add something to their life. So perhaps they're going to decide that they are going to do some kind of Bible study for that particular time of season. Or maybe they're, they're going to um, give in, in, to, a new, to a new place where they can donate or maybe, maybe get involved in some kind of service during that season of Lent. But um, that's what folks tend to do, and they take this time, they take these 40 days, and you may have experienced this as well, where you either uh, take something away from your life or add something to your life. Now, I tended to like to add something to my life rather than take something away from it. I don't, I don't know why, but what I've found is oftentimes people just do this kind of as a fad sort of thing and not as a part of their spiritual journey. And so during the season of Lent, for me, the idea is if I am taking something away, I'm doing that to somehow focus me on the presence of God in my life. Or if I'm adding something to it, I try to make sure that whatever I add to my life, it's got me focused on an aspect of my faith or, or a connection with God that maybe I have not been experiencing. The key, though, is to recognize that the season of Lent is truly a part of our spiritual journey. And that, for me, has always been the key. You see, the thing is, the thing that I think we often get wrong in, uh, in our experience of faith is that many times we think that uh, we go through perhaps a time of conversion or a time of commitment, that, that time where you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, whatever you do in your life or whatever you experienced in your life. And we think that once we have experienced that conversion, well, then we just kind of move on with our life and everything's, the everything's, everything's good. But actually, conversion is not just a one-time experience. It's not just a one event in our life. And conversion, in fact, I think, is a whole lifelong process where we may in the beginning of our, of our commitment to faith start off with maybe a prayer of commitment or something like that. But then throughout our life, as our life journeys on, we experience different things that help transform us or convert us even further into what it means to be a passionate follower of Jesus. And here's the interesting thing, as I'm thinking about this, I thought, you know, in a, in a way, in a sense, um, the conversion of the Apostle Paul shows how conversion wasn't just about one thing that happened. If you don't know the story, Saul, who was a persecutor of the church, is converted into a follower of Jesus. And in fact, one of the, one of the main people who, who planted more churches probably in the first century than any other one person. But a lot of times when you look at the scripture, the story of Paul's conversion from Saul to Paul is told uh, first in Acts chapter 9, and many people think that his conversion is what happens in that moment when he's just on the road to Damascus. The way it happens is this. Jesus, uh, Saul is, is on the road to Damascus where he's going to go, and his plan is to go arrest and persecute Christians because he believes as a as a strong believer, as a Jewish strong believer, that those who are following Jesus are going the wrong way. And so he's on his way to, to try to end 
this follower of Jesus fad that he sees going on. And along the way, he has this bright light come to him and he sees, he experiences a voice from heaven and he experiences the presence of Jesus. And that voice says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Now, for some folks, they see that time, this encounter with Jesus as the conversion of, of Paul, from Saul to Paul. But if you look next, what happens in this, in this experience is that experience with Jesus has blinded uh, Saul. Uh, he hasn't been changed yet to Paul, but it has blinded him. And he's left confused. He left, he's left with those who are walking with him having to lead uh, him to where he's going next. But then he has another encounter, encounter. And this encounter is with those believers who he was going to go and persecute. So he has an encounter with the community of faith. First step in his conversion is an experience or an encounter with Jesus, but the second step is an experience or an encounter with the community of faith. And this one believer named Ananias comes to Saul and he puts his hands on Saul's eyes and scales come away from his eyes and he begins to see again. Paul's conversion then is two steps. It's an encounter with Jesus but it's also an encounter with the community of faith, with others who believe. But there's another step along the way too. And in all honesty, Acts doesn't really do it justice because after this experience with Ananias and the community of faith, it says that Paul immediately began to preach the gospel. But if you look at Paul's telling of the story in the letter that he wrote to the church in Galatia, it seems as if there was at least a one to two, maybe three year experience of Paul being taught more about the faith before he's ready and prepared to go off and to preach. You see, his conversion, his experience of conversion was at least three steps. That encounter with Jesus, that encounter with the community, and that time of study and contemplation to allow those two experiences to begin to change his life. Now, I don't know what your conversion experience was. I don't know if you had a dramatic experience of conversion or if it was just like, you know, I was always going to church and I just have always believed. Whatever that is, hopefully, it has included an encounter in some way or another with the person of Jesus or with the presence of God. But then I also think it needs to have that experience with the community of faith because we do not live our faith out alone, but we live it with the whole community of the people gathered. But then even then, along the way, we need to have moments where we are taught, where we contemplate, where we experience a time of prayer and transformation because conversion is a lifetime journey. So, Lent began yesterday on Ash Wednesday. There's still time. Perhaps you can take this season, these next 40 days leading up to Monday, Thursday and that experience of uh, of, of recognizing the death of Jesus and then the resurrection of Jesus, perhaps in this period of 40 days, it can be another step along the journey for you in that move towards being fully converted to who, who God is calling you to be in Jesus Christ. So, the season of Lent. Enjoy the journey. Find a way to make this period of time meaningful both to you personally, but also to you spiritually. And we'll walk together along this journey of faith.